Welcome to another Geometry Notes tutorial. In this video I will show you an approach to create a paper model look in Blender. I was inspired by the intro of the Netflix show La Casa de Papel or Money Heist in English. The show is about a robbery which is planned in a small paper model of the target. It is really nice and interestingly staged and made me want to reconstruct something similar in Blender. So I built a combination of geometry nodes and shaders to create this paper or cardboard look and built a little street scene with it. But now it's time for the explanation, so get your notes and let's get started. So at first I want to exchange this object here with Suzanne because then I have a bit more geometry to look at and then I want to open the geometry nodes editor and create a new group as always. So this effect will be divided in two parts basically. One is the geometry and the other part is the shading. On the geometry level I want to at first make the geometry here a bit crooked by shifting the geometry in random directions a little bit to get rid of the mathematical correct modeling appearance that it looks a bit more like a crooked piece of cardboard which was glued together. And additionally I want to cut some of these edges to show the inner paper or the inner cardboard cells that it looks more like it's made out of paper. So it will be on two levels basically. So let's start with the slightly crooked geometry. That's pretty easy. We will just add a set position node here because we want to change the positions of the vertices. And we want to add a random value node which we will put to vector because we will have yeah multiple vectors, not only one float value. Connect that to the offset. Okay, this looks pretty bad, but we will adjust this now because I want to use this value here for the maximum value, which we can define then in this list here. But I want, of course, another data type basically, which is the float. So I want to choose a float value here. And additionally, to make this more automated, I want to make an intersection here and have a math value on multiply connect that here, multiply minus one and put it to the minimum value. And by this now I have, yeah, have a setup where I can just dial this one slider and it will be pretty balanced because if I don't do this, it will shift in one direction, which is this positive X, Y, Z direction. I will balance that with the minus X, Y, Z on the minimum value and then you can have your slightly crooked geometry with this one slider. Let's put this to 0.005 or something. Then it's a bit crooked, but not too much. Okay, that was already the first part of the geometry part. Now comes the second, which is the yeah sliced open mesh, basically. The mesh is not really sliced open, but let's pretend it is. So how to achieve that? I want to extrude everything and some edges are split with the split edges node and by this they will be extruded in other directions and then it will look like as they are cut open like cardboard. To do that I want to add a split edges node here and after that an extrude mesh node like this. Leave it on faces, turn off individual and then you can see the offset looks like this. Every yeah, face is splitted and extruded then. So this would be the cut open edge look like. And now we just have to define which edges are split and which are not. And then we have our geometry finished. And I want to define which edges are cut in two ways. One is a random value basically because I want to have a different distribution here on every object and I want to be able to control it. So it's of course random point one and point two it should have the correct angle because I want to prevent that very flat angles, for example, this here is cut open because of course, if you fold something and glue it, which is out of cardboard, then you will fold edges without cutting them if the angle is not pretty high. For example, angle like this, you would only fold and not cut it open to glue it back together. You would only cut edges which yeah have a an high angle yeah for example 90 degree angles or even more you would cut these edges here and glue them back together uh, but this flat edges you wouldn't you wouldn't do that or 
not that likely that you do it. And that's why I will build in a threshold of an angle that only high angles will be cut open. So let's start with the angle because that's the shorter part. I want to have something here, but I have to connect it to something. So let's use a math node here like this. And we want to multiply that with pi divided by 180. That's because I want to put in here a degree value, but I need a radian value afterwards. So I have to convert it. So this basically converts the degree to radiant. So, and now I can use radiant values after this, which I need now, because of course I need an edge angle to calculate the angles here of the edge. And I want to compare them. So you use a compare node, float is fine, greater than. And now this angle, if the angle here of an edge is greater than the threshold angle, then this is positive and will result in a split edge. So this is fine. And here is now my value. So let's say 90 degree angles. And you can see every angle yeah, below 90 degree is not cut. So let's turn it down. And then you can see more and more angles will be selected and will be cut. And yeah, then by this, you can select yeah, a angle you want to choose where you think this should be cut or not. But this is only one part. I want to add a second condition here with a Boolean math node on end, that's fine. So both of these condition have to be fulfilled that an edge is cut. And now here comes the randomization part. Here I just pick the indices of the points. Then I use a random value node on integer, connect that to the ID. And now I can reassign the indices and I want them to be from zero to 10. So I have roughly 10% per integer here of a percentage to be selected for the splitting part. And then I just need another compare note here, put this to less than or equal, uh, sorry, here, less than or equal. So if this here is less than or equal to this here, then it will be in the selection to and be cut. And now I have to change now some things here because here this is basically the crookedness or the random geometry. So maybe random geometry. This value here, the second one, is basically the angle threshold. So angle threshold to be cut. And the third part here is now, which should be an integer. So switch this to integer. This is now basically a 10% step of the chance to be cut. So we could call this 10% step to be cut. So split or something. Yeah, so, and now you can change here the chance of something being cut here. So here it's on zero, so let's increase it. And if you put it on five, 50% here are selected to be cut and additional only the edges are cut, which yeah, exceed this threshold here. And now you can just select a threshold of course, you could pick something low, for example, 40 degree, and then pick a percentage here, 50%. It's not really 10% steps. It's a bit different because here we have 11 values. Zero is a value as well. Um, so it's roughly 10% here to increase the amount of cuts in general here. And if you're not happy with this result, you can, of course, choose this as the seed for the cut. So, of course, you can say, oh, I want to have 30% cuts and I'm not happy with this result, so I click on seed until I'm happy, click, click, click. Oh, this distribution I like. And now some of the edges here are cut. So let's put this a bit lower, maybe to 20%. That's a bit um, um, higher chance of doing it here, um, like this. And then you can change or choose your yeah, edges of which, which you want to cut. Okay, so far for the geometry, now we come to the shading part. But to be able to do that, we have to define the shading part, of course, first, um, because I want to have a different material on the inside here, of course, than on the outside, because we will have an outside paper and an inside paper or cardboard. And because of that, you, of course, have to choose here a set material node here and another one after that. And here, for example, the top one, which is this, 
is the outside material and the sides of the extrusions are the inside material. So, and because of that, oh, by the way, this is pretty strong. Maybe something like this or something like this. Okay, I think that that's better here for this model. By the way, the amount or the, the depth of these cuts or the, si the size of these splits here depends a bit on the size and the scale of your model. So you maybe have to tweak it a bit. But if you want, you can just add the offset scale here to yeah as its own variable here. Maybe let's put it a bit uh, something like this that so you can see it better. Um, then you have an offset scale here too, and you can define how large you want the cuts to be. Yeah, maybe because on objects it may vary a bit, and then you can dial it in for every object individually. So then let's quickly create two shaders here. Open shader editor. We already got one. Let's say this is the paper inside and make a copy of that and then choose it for paper outside like this. And then the top should be the outside and the side should be inside like this, outside inside. And now we can close this because we're finished with the geometry. Oops. Um, we're finished with the geometry and now we can proceed with the shading here. So this is our monkey. Let's go to the material preview and continue with the shading. The outside is basically pretty simple. I just used a noise texture like this on object here, like that, to have your, yeah, to have just two colors combined. So you can just use a color ramp like this, use the factor here, and then use the color for the base color here and the subsurface scattering too. I recommend that, of course, because you're trying to recreate paper here or cardboard and light gets through paper and cardboard easily. And that's why, of course, subsurface scattering should be enabled here. But I will leave it out because it's too noisy than when I show it in cycles when I have the subsurface scattering enabled. But you should use it definitely. So then I just pick two cardboard colors, basically, maybe one slightly brighter like this and one slightly darker like this maybe, but of course you can pick your colors here. So I have now this, of course, this is way too small here or too large in this case. So I want to reduce it to, I don't know, 0 0.3 or something. Yeah, something like this, that it's pretty large. Yeah, these spots here. Yeah, and let's see. So, okay, I think that's fine. And after that, okay, so this is fine. And then I want to use, of course, a bump map here to fake the surface of the paper. For that, I could just, yeah, copy this one here. So you can basically reuse this or even this. It depends a bit on how you want to map them. You can, of course, just do it like this, that you have two separate mappings, but you can do it with the same mapping node here as well in this case. So I use another noise texture, plug that into a bump height here, use that as the normal, and then use the vector here from the object, that's fine. And of course, I want to have a large scale here like this. And uh, maybe that's a bit too large, maybe on two and a high detail like 10 or something that you get this paper structure. But of course, this is way too strong. So I decrease the strength 0.3 or something. And then you have this slightly paper surface here on your yeah cardboard model or paper model whatever so let's say you're happy with this of course you can tweak around with the scale of the noise texture and strength and so on but in general this is the color of the outside material now let's come to the color of the inside material which we prepared here oh sorry inside and here this is a bit easier i just use a voronoi texture here again on object here as well and here I basically connect this to the color as well. So let's use a color ramp here on distance. Use this here too. And of course here subdivision surface, use that as well from the color. I just don't do it because of the noise here when I plug this to cycles. So check it out like this. So this looks fine for now. And now we're going to do the insides here. And this is basically done by picking two colors here as well. So a darker brown of the inside cardboard and a brighter for the inside cardboard, maybe something like this. 
I think that's fine. And I want to have it more, yeah, of a contrast here like this, pretty much actually. Okay, and now you think, um, okay, that's looking weird. You have to, of course, increase the scale by a lot. So let's pick 400 or something to have a nice spot where I can see it here, for example. Oh, that's fine. So here on this split, you can see it, but it looks totally random. So you decrease the randomness here to 0 0.1 or 0 0.15. Then it's a bit non-random. And of course, use the output here as a bump map again, bump on height for the normal like this. And here you can see that this looks now um, a bit small. In this case, just as I said, it depends a bit on the model size and the extrusion here is a bit strong. So maybe I want to decrease it a little bit here to 0 0.02 or even smaller like this and maybe increase the angle threshold a bit that it's not that super hard here. But for example, on pieces like here, you can see the pattern here is a bit tiny in comparison to the size of the object because a piece of cardboard wouldn't be with that many little cells here. And because of this, you can just decrease the scale here to achieve a more realistic look depending on the size of your cardboard. So for example, maybe it would look like this here on that scale. But if you now watch here in cycles, you can see Maybe let's see something at the top. Let's increase the sub steps here. Um, oops, uh, yeah, 10 and decrease the angle threshold. Then you can see it a bit better here. Here you can see that the appeal which you have here now is this slightly brighter cardboard. And on the inside, you can see these cells in the slits here. And that's the look what I wanted to go for that you can automatically create just cardboard versions of things, which just look like you, you cut them up and glued them back together. Of course, this is a bit hard. So usually maybe it, it would look like this, for example. Yeah. And then you can select the seat where you want the cuts to be. And then you can look at your yeah cut and gl glued back together monkey out of cardboard. Yeah. So that's what I had as an approach and decided to release this as a tutorial because I think this look may help you to create little paper worlds or something like this. So this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot. If you liked it, feel free to subscribe to my channel or check out my Patreon. Now you can start cutting your meshes open and make them out of paper. So have fun cutting and see you soon.